Now let's see uh, how we can hook uh, CPU ID instructions. Uh, basically, uh, like all the other events, CPU ID hooking is also another event and is as a part. It's available as a part of hypervisor introspection exports in HyperDG. We can uh, use uh bank cpu id or exclamation mark cpu id command for this purpose and it tries to monitor all of the cpu ids that that are executed in the windows i made some examples for it uh generally cpu id instruction is uh, responsible for uh showing whether some of the features are supported in the processor or not uh, or other signatures of the processor. Uh, basically, if we uh, try to change them, we could use HyperDVG for this purpose. Uh, but let, let's see. Let's see some examples. I made a CPU ID test uh, program uh, that basically executes. Uh, a special a special cpu id instruction with a special index the index of the cpu id is always in the eax register so let's try to run it uh, yeah here's the result for this uh, uh, cpu id instructions on my system uh, uh, if we search uh, google for uh, some of the indexes of uh, CPU ID instruction, we, we, uh, we could see the details for these uh, CPU ID indexes. Uh, I made some examples here. Let's try to uh, see them. Uh, Yeah, here is a link. Um, the Wikipedia link also explains some of the CPU ID, for example, with EAX, uh, which is uh, equals to zero, we could uh, expect these values, while if the EAX is one, then it uh, reports some of the processor info and feature bits. So this is uh, this is how EDX and E6 registers uh, are formed after running CPU ID with a uh, one uh, EAX. Uh, these are the features that are supported or that that are reported here. So now let's try to just test them. Um, you can find uh, find this. Uh, uh, project in the uh, files aligned with the tutorial. Uh, let's try to run a CPU ID test here. And uh, just try to. Uh, I forgot to just change it uh, to. Uh, yeah. So basically, we will change it to multi traded debug here. And in case of this, we will change it to multi traded DLL, which is uh, also should be changed to multi traded. That's okay. No, I try to remove it and again. Uh, <clears throat> Windows tries to scan it. Uh, yeah, here are the results uh, for this. Uh, uh, VMware workstation machine. Uh, 
so in case if uh, I want to uh, use EAX zero, then these uh, values are reported. And if I set EAX to one, then these values are reported. So uh, basically, uh, if we want to just modify one of them, uh, we could use some of the scripts here, for example, um, in this S script, I tried to simply change the CPU ID zero and uh, set EBX, E6 and ETX to zero and also try to short circuit uh, the event. So I, I'm sure that uh, the, the system won't execute this CPU ID, only these values are reported to the uh, application so now, now let's try to run this application as you can see here is the results but in case if i try to pause hyperdbg and run this S script then after that i try to run the cpu id test again and you can see that these values are changed to zero because uh, we changed them here and nothing happens like uh, the, the EAX is also zero because uh, the index was zero and we sh short circuit the event but in case if we remove uh, this event again uh, we see that the actual values are displayed here this was a really simple example uh, there is a uh, uh, an application CPU-Z, uh, which is responsible for reporting some of the uh, processor features, you can download them online. There is a port, uh, portable edition of this CPU-Z uh, program. I try to just paste it here. Uh, again, I try to run it. And as you can see, It detects uh, my processor, uh, detects the features or the instructions that are supported by my processor uh, along with some other information. And it also detects that my machine is uh, an Intel Core i5. Um, so let, let's just try, uh, we know that the CPU, CPU-Z uh, program tries to use some CPU ID instructions. So let's try to modify them uh, for the first example. Uh, uh, I skip this example. This is the same as the uh, first one. It tries to put uh, CPU ID one, uh, CPU ID with EAX index one to uh, these uh, values. We, we already test the same command here no need to test it anymore but let's uh, set, uh let's a little bit change the uh, cpu id zero to some other uh, uh like uh, for example if you see from the uh, first uh, from the zero uh, eax uh this tries uh, in uh, this uh, in this uh, CPU ID tries to uh, show some some of the uh, the signature of the processor. For example, uh, if for for example uh, for Intel processor this signature is sh uh, shown, or for example for AMD processor authentic AMD, or for Intel genuine uh, genuine Intel is showed. Uh, there are also different, uh, very different uh, names for different processors. Uh, so I try to just change this uh, this Intel signature, which we accept, which we expect to see uh, this uh, signature for Intel processor. I try to change it to an authentic AMD. Uh, so basically, if I try to uh convert uh ASCII uh, uh hexadecimal to 
ASCII. We can see that uh, I changed uh, the signature of the processor to authentic uh, AMD. And it's a little bit awkward how it shows it here because we have to change it uh, in three, four bit registers. So basically, it's something like this uh, authentic AMD um, authentic. Uh, A U uh, T H E N T I C A M D from right to left. You have to read it because you want to put them in a register. Uh, let's let's try let's try to run uh, the same command uh, on my machine. And I'll, I also uh, ignored by sh short circuiting the event so. Here I try to run this CPU ID again. And as you can see, it, it can no longer uh, uh, recognize my processor. So it just tries, it, it just thinks that we are running on an AMD processor. Uh, I run it uh, previously and this is the new window. So yeah, this, this is how we change the signature of the processor in HyperDBG by using a simple script. Uh, and we can fool some of the programs, for example, to think that the current processor is different. We could do that. Uh, let's try to just remove uh, the effects of this uh, script and run another script. Uh, if uh, as you can see from the correct version of the uh, CPU Z, uh, uh, we support these instruction sets. Uh, for example, VTX, AES, AVX, AVX2, SSE2, SSE, and SSE3 are also supported by my processor. Uh, but in case if you want to uh, like uh, mask some of them in the uh, CPU ID you can all you can you could again use them uh, if I return to the Wikipedia uh, page here you can see that uh, for CPU ID with EAX1 uh, in the E6 register uh, let's search for ETX or VMX, yeah. In E6 uh, register, uh, when CPU ID is is one, uh, then uh, the fifth uh, bit of uh, E6 shows the uh, shows whether the processor supports VMX or not. So uh, I try to simply. Uh, I knew that uh, CPU ID one uh, executes uh, by these values. Let's try to see it. Uh, CPU ID one give gives me these values in this uh, virtual machine. So I try to set all of them uh, like a normal machine. And instead of uh, that, I try to mask uh, the fifth bit of uh, uh, the E6 register. So let's try to run it again on the machine to see what happens here. I try to run uh, this CPU Z again
and 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 yeah, and also won't update the only first time the CPU ID is, uh, is executed and it continues to show it. Uh, as you can see from uh, the right panel, uh, there is no la no longer we see uh, VMX or VTX feature. We have VTX here in the correct version of the uh, uh, CPU ID, but in this case, we don't have VTX anymore. But keep in mind that uh, by using this command, you you can uh, just pull some of the applications like CPU uh, CPU Z uh, that this feature is not supported. But still, this feature is supported in case if you want to disable the support for a special feature, you should use, for example, the MSR run or uh, other commands that are related to the control registers. For example, by using MSR. Uh, right, you can disable some of, some of these features if the processor or if an application or a driver or the operating system tries to activate some of the features, you can uh, actually perform, actually disable them by using MSR write event command, but the CPU ID is just a notification, it's just the, like the processor wants to say something that whether it's supported or not, it's up to uh the program to uh configure it to just uh like see it, that it's not supported and uh, won't perform other checks it's up to you you can you can decide whether to disable it by using msr register or just disabling uh for the application to just give the give the process give, give the program some ideas whether the, the feature is supported or not